Hi guys, I'm picking up where I left off on uh, exercise two for the dual compressors where they switch back and forth. I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail about how this section on rung five and six works. Um, so the first thing is I'm gonna delete, I'm gonna go offline first, go offline and delete all this stuff so we can get down to just the section we're talking about. Uh, here we are, and I'll also delete that, make it kind of as simple as possible. I guess I can get rid of this and make this bigger too should all be easier to follow then. Um, here's my pressure switch, which I'm not gonna use. I'm gonna put it with, uh, I'm gonna use the IO simulator and I'm gonna use this input here so that I can manually trigger it. Um, I think everything else is memory location, yeah. Okay, so I can trigger this and let me download it and put it in run mode. So right now, this bit down here is latching itself in because when this is true, it makes this true. And B301 up here is false. So you're coming through here, coming through here, and here's your path. So the input side of this rung is true, which enables a true in the memory location for the output of that rung, which is B302 is right here. So the way this works is it reads from top to bottom, it evaluates the left-hand side, which are the inputs, and decides whether or not, based on the way you wrote the logic, the output or the right-hand side should have a zero or a one written into it, a false or a true. This output coil, for lack of a better term, or OTE, Alan Bradley calls it, output energized. Um, so in this case, it's evaluating the inputs and it's saying, this is true and this is true, which leads the path for the output to be true. So it's writing a one in there, but it does it in that sequence and in steps. It doesn't just do it instantaneously. Um, so the reason that's important is, I'll put this in step mode and flip back here. So if I close this input, which is right here, um, I didn't run a scan yet. We're at zero scan, we're in step mode. When I hit single scan, it'll go through and do one scan. So it'll show that this input is true. This one shot memory location is right here. The reason a one shot needs its own memory location is it looks at the previous scan and says, was I a zero last scan and I'm a one this scan? If that's true, then I'm going to be true and I'm gonna fire. A lot of people you know, like to use the term fire for a one shot because it only actually actuates for one scan. So the one scan, uh, one shot rising OSR means when this zero rises to a one, that specific scan, it's gonna make the output side true if everything else on, this, on the input side is true. So when I hit single scan, this is gonna go true, this is gonna go true, this output is gonna go true. So it's gonna write a one in B301, which is right here. It's gonna do all that on this rung, and then it's gonna come down to the next rung. When it writes that B301 one in there, instantly all the other B301s in the program are all gonna switch because they're all looking at this exact same memory location. They're all tied to it. So the second that this gets written to one, down here, these are gonna switch states. This is gonna go up here because if B301 is true, that means this is going to go true and this is gonna go false. It's gonna switch because if you wanna think of it as normally open and normally closed, this normally open is now being energized, so it's closing and this is where it's normally closed, that's gonna open up because this P301 is going on or true. So that's gonna switch states. The instant that, the, before we go down and read one, run rung one, when we're still on zero one or zero zero, um, when this goes true, it's gonna write a one there. And this is immediately gonna flip up before the second rung, well, rung one, which is the second rung, before this rung even gets evaluated, this is gonna switch states. So. In that case, when it comes down to evaluate the inputs on rung one, this is gonna be true and this is gonna be true. So it's gonna look at that and say, the input side is telling me to make the output false because this is true and this is true. There is no path on this input side for it to get through to make, make the output true or on. So this is gonna go off this or false. The, sec for the time that B302, this one, when this gets changed to a zero because it was evaluated as false, 
this is going to flip up here and this is going to be true. So at that point, this is going to be true, this is going to be true, and this is going to be false. So because we're going to scan by scan, if we do that one scan, we'll look and we'll say this is true, this is true, and this is false or off. And it looks like there's a clear path that this should be on, but it's not going to be on. So let's see what that looks like. There you have it. So we just did a one single scan. You'll see the scan says one. This went high or true because we closed this switch. The one shot went true because it went from a zero to a one. That's B300 right here. Now it has a one in it. The last scan, it was a zero. So that's gonna fire and it's gonna make the input side of this rung true. The input side of this rung, everything's true. It's gonna make your output true, B301, which is right here. When that's true, it instantly switches this down here before it even comes down to the next rung to evaluate what's going on because they're all pointed at the exact same location in memory, everything that's addressed that same address. So this is instantly going to change before it even comes down. So now it comes down here, it reads this, and it's already scanned all the way through, but at the point when this got flipped and it came down to evaluate this side, the B302 down here was true. So this was on and this was on. So there wasn't a way for this to be energized. So it turned off. The second this went false, it flipped this back up to here. So this, the last part of reading this rung is to update the outputs. When you update this output 302, which is right here, to false, you don't go back and reevaluate the beginning of the rung. You move on to the next rung, which is the end rung. And then the next rung up here is going to be this. But in the meantime, the input side of this rung is saying that you have the ability to energize the output but the output's not energized because it evaluates this first, decide, it evaluates the inputs, and it decides based on the logic if the output should be true or false. It updates the output, and then it goes to the next rung. It doesn't update the output and then go back and relook at the, the beginning of that same rung. Um, it just moves along. And you can do that because the cycle, um, the scan cycle is so fast that it's like imperceivably fast when it happens. You don't see it. Um, and it usually is not an issue because you're doing, you know, what, tens or hundreds of thousands, hundreds or thousands of scans, you know, per second. It's flying through here. So it's like imperceivably fast. Um, actually, I'll show you what it looks like in real time. Well, I guess we'll do it. We'll see what it looks like going back the other way. So now when I hit the next single scan, this output is going to drop out because What's gonna happen? Well, here, I'll just do it. So what happened is the one shot is still true because the input going to it is true, but it's looking at the memory location, which is 300, 300, and it's saying it was a one last scan, and it's a one this scan. So it, ha it wasn't on a rising edge. It's continuously on the high side or true side. So it's highlighted because it's true, but that doesn't mean that it is making this side of the rung true. So you'll see that both of these are highlighted, but the output's not on. It's because the one shot only lets, lets you power the output for one scan, um, and it's only on that rising edge. So if it looks at its memory and sees it was one before and it's one this rung, it's not gonna let, it, let anything go through. Um, so this goes off, which brings this back down to here. So it's in its normally closed state, if you wanna think of it that way down here. And then this is still up here because the output went false last scan. So that stays up there. The only thing that happens on the input side of this rung is this pops down here, um, which makes the output false, keeps the output false, I should say. So to look at this in real time, let me switch back to my inputs here. So I don't even have my very high scan rate, really. But what happens is every time I go from off to on with this switch right here, when I go from false to true, for one scan, this flips up to here. And then the next scan, it flips back down. So if you look at it, it'll always look like this um, normally closed down here. 
I, I hesitate to say normally closed because Alan Bradley doesn't use that terminology, but when we do Siemens PLCs in the fall, they do use normally open and normally closed, and all of our relay logic stuff all uses normally open and normally closed. This is the only program that doesn't use it, so I'm always like biting my tongue when I say normally open and normally closed in the Alan Bradley software because that's not the terminology they use, but that's what we use everywhere else. So for the most part, I do still use it. So what it'll look like down here is always true, and this top one is never true, but really every time I flip it, every time you see this change state, this went up here and then came back down. It just happens so fast that you can't see it. Um, so if you're trying to figure out how this works and you're flipping this back and forth and you see everything changing state, but you don't see this ever change and you never see this output come on, um, even when you see that this one shot is true, the output's still not on and this is still isn't up here. <laughs> you know, it's real confusing unless you do it individual scan and try to figure out what's going on. Um, if I turn the scan rate all the way down, you might be able to see this flash for a second. You might be able to see this over here flash for a second. They're the same thing. Yeah, I can almost see it blip right when I first do it. But that's with the scan rate at the lowest possible speed. Um, if it's any kind of normal scan rate, you're not really gonna see it happen. Oh, you're gonna see this go high, this go high, this go high, or true and true this not change state, just stay off as false and see this stay off too. But you'll see these change and you'll see this output change and it won't make any sense why that's happening unless you go to your individual steps. Right now everything's off. I'm gonna turn this on. It's gonna make this one shot fire. This output's gonna go and it's gonna pop up to there. When it does that, it's going to make this output false because this is going to get updated before it comes down to read this rung. It's going to be updated when they update the outputs from rung zero. When it comes down to rung one, this will be true and this will be true. So the input side will tell you to make the output false because there won't be a path through there. So it's going to update this as false. As soon as it does that, instantaneously everywhere else in the program that's addressed to that location is going to change, which is going to make this change up to here. And that'll be the end of that scan. And then when we look at it, this will be true, and this will be true, and the output will be false. Because when it made the output false, this popped up to here, but it's not reevaluating the inputs and then updating the output again until it comes all the way around. And it's confusing because electrically that would not work. If, this, if these were like auxiliary contacts on a relay, um, when this dropped out and it went up there and you still had power on this, the output would still be powered. You would. like. It, it only works this way because it's a computer and it's evaluating the inputs and then considering the logic and then updating the outputs in a certain sequence and then going around to other rungs before it comes back here and looks at this. If you were just looking for like electrical continuity or power to get through to the other side, it wouldn't work this way. Like do, um, I'll have to close this, do a single scan. So if this was just an electrical drawing and these were auxiliary contacts and this was true and this was true, if these were both allowing power to go through them, obviously this output would be on. But in this scenario, in ladder logic, this is not gonna be on until the next scan when it comes back through. But it's not gonna be on then either because what's gonna happen is this one shot will drop out, which is going to make this output false and the second that happens, it's gonna update this before it comes down to evaluate the input side of this rung again. This is gonna go false, which is gonna put this down here. So when it comes down to evaluate the inputs on this side, this is gonna be true and this is gonna be true, um, which is not gonna allow the input side of this to be true and make the output true. It's gonna stay false. So you'll just see this pop back down. You'll see this output go out. This will go back down here and your one shot will stay true even though it's not energizing your output. There you go. So your output dropped out, this went down here, and the output on rung 001 stayed false because this got updated before it came down to look at the input side of this rung. So I know this is kind of a confusing topic, but if you had to troubleshoot something like this, and like I said, you had it in run mode and you were changing states and you're like, uh, why is this even here? It never changes. This output never energizes. It does, it's only happening for one single scan. Um, you'll see everything else change and it can be real confusing if you don't understand the process of the, uh, the order of operations. What's even more confusing is the when you get up to control logics and RS Logics 5000 and um, RS Logics Studio and all that, they have a different order of operations that's not the same as this. 
So this is true of RS Logix 5 and RS Logix 500, um, but not true of newer versions. They're a little bit different. So it's all of it's confusing, but hopefully this clears up some of the issues.